I have two brief questions I'd like to ask, if I may. Foot Media, my name is Brendan Malone, and you're watching The Daily Question. Today's question of the day, are we witnessing the death of Hollywood? Now, the reason I'm asking that question is because I've gone to the viewer mailbag again, and Clark Miller, thank you Clark, sent me this email about a week or so back, and this is the question that he wanted me to explore on today's episode. Has Hollywood seen its day? And this is what he said, I contend that it has. In a nutshell, I think social media, video games, and home entertainment technologies have taken over from the cinema experience. And I would have to say, I don't disagree with you there, Clark. However, I think there's actually three different currents that have all come together at once, three different weather systems to create the perfect storm, and this perfect storm is actually really detrimental to Hollywood. So the first of all is the thing that you've talked about here, and that's the change of technology, the development, the advancement of technology, and in particular the way in which we receive content and engage with our entertainment media. Video gaming, it has come a long way. It's a very immersive experience, it's a very story-driven experience now in a lot of cases. So that's definitely a big change. But it's not just that, it's also content streaming. It, it's The norm now is that we watch what we want to watch on demand. We stream it. The only thing really that cinema has going for it at the moment is the arbitrary imposition of a separate release date for the cinematic release versus the home theatre release. So you have to wait a few more months before you can actually watch it on home theatre and then maybe a little bit longer than that before you can watch it on some sort of streaming service like Netflix. However, that's just an arbitrary imposition and I would argue it's not long before that actually changes and before the studios realise that well, potentially there's some big money to be made here if we just make the, 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 the property available right from the get-go to people and maybe we just charge a little bit more up front. So instead of going to pay your 10 bucks at the movie theatre, you might pay, I don't know, 15 to get access to it at home on a streaming service and then once it becomes available as a rental or as a, something to buy, you would then pay a lower price, uh, you know, a bit further down the track. So I think it's, it's, it's inevitable, I think that is going to happen. So technology is one factor that, that has completely changed the game. The second problem for Hollywood is what I like to call Hollywood hectoring. More and more, Hollywood award ceremonies seem to be just totally out of touch with the real world, and more and more, they seem to be about a group of people who live in a very sheltered and privileged bubble, who then get up on stage and want to give the rest of us some sort of moral lecture about how they think the world should be and what they think everyone's failings are. And it's really quite absurd, especially when you think about the fact that most of us, your ordinary mums and dads out there, your ordinary folks who are living in the real world, who are trying to hold down a sort of an ordinary job, uh, earn a, a basic living, keep their families fed, pay their mortgage and all that kind of stuff, we're actually often far more socially conscious, far more morally responsible than a lot of these people are who want to lecture us. So when Leonardo DiCaprio gets up to give us big lectures, about the environment, I have a wee chuckle to myself because I know that myself and my family are far more environmentally conscious. We have far less of a footprint. We, we cause far less uh, impact on the environment than a guy who, who flies around in a private jet does, right? So, so I just, it's the Hollywood hectoring is really a, a, a becoming more and more of a, a, a thing that is alienating, I think, audiences. And it's not just at the awards ceremonies now, it's just spilled over into all sorts of areas. The constant virtue signaling. Now, these are the people who are supposed to be the icons. Uh, you know, the people who you're like, oh, wow, I love that actor, I think that actor's awesome. Or that. But what's happening more and more now is people are saying, yeah, I think that person's a great actor, but I wish they would just stop with all the preaching, or I wish they would just stop with all the lecturing and the and and the, the sort of the constant pontificating. That's not a good sign. That seems to be more of a, a, a sort of a normal thing now for people to look at Hollywood and actually think that Hollywood, you know, the magic is gone. The gloss is gone that once used to be there. It's like, oh yeah, that's, that's a bunch of sort of self-entitled people who live in a bubble who want to tell the rest of us how we should be living our lives. The third and final problem that Hollywood has is that they are no longer capturing the imagination. The type of content that they are tuning out no longer captures the imagination like it used to. The thing about Hollywood was, 
it was never really just about the technological experience. The idea of going to the cinema, in fact, once upon a time, at the very beginning, it was in black and white, they didn't introduce colour for quite some time, and the audio quality is nothing like what we see today, the visual experience is nothing like what we have today, yet the, the imagination, the capturing of the imagination, that sort of experience of being able to, to, to go into a film and just switch off for an hour and a half and be drawn into a world beyond this world, something that really pulled you out of the ordinary mundane stuff and gave you an experience where your imagination could sort of let loose. You could see the human experience reflected in what you were seeing. You saw something that either captured your imagination or excited you or it was something you wanted to be. You know, there was something of, of reality reflected in that exercise of the imagination. But that's all gone now by and large. So what instead we get is, is uh, movies that are very formulaic. The creativity factor has been killed. The capturing of the imagination just doesn't happen anymore. Why should I be interested in Hollywood when they don't capture my imagination? And the whole point of Hollywood is that they should be capturing our imagination. Instead now they are producing content that is more about formula and it seems to me the two key components of this formulaic approach are propaganda and profits. So how do we make as much in the way of profit as we can? How do we get the best looking actor? How do we, how do we time this thing right? How do we do product placement? It just becomes about mo making money. That's the sort of the, the, the primary driving concern. And then secondary to that is the idea of promoting propaganda. This idea that, you know, movies are a powerful vehicle for change. And so what we've got to do is we've got to make every movie, we've got to sort of stuff it full of propaganda and ideology that we want people to embrace. The the problem is that if all you're about is politics and, and, and profits, there is no mythology in that. The authentic mythology is being trampled on because of this nonsense. And so without that authentic mythology, and I think what makes a mythology authentic is that it's a, a way of trying to engage with and understand and draw us deeper into the reality of the human experience with, with stories about uh, dragons and giants and, 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 and sort of big tales that really are larger than life. Uh, whether they are fantasy or whatever the genre is, but they, they sort of, they use these devices, these mythology uh, or mythological devices to actually reflect something true about virtue and the goodness and the beauty and the truth that is on offer and can be seen in the world. But, but that, and that's what sort of captures your imagination. But once that's gone, what is there? Why would you go to cinema? Why would you be interested in Hollywood if all they are doing is working to formula based on profits and propaganda? It's just, it doesn't capture the imagination. Two of the biggest, most popular movies in the history of cinema were both cinematic failures at the box office. Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life flopped. It failed at the box office. But with the advent of television, once more people got expo exposed to it because they began to play it on television, it became this huge phenomenon because people all of a sudden were exposed to this profoundly beautiful story that offered some important truth about the human experience and was creatively told with, with great excellence. The other one was The Shawshank Redemption. The Shawshank Redemption was not a hit at the cinema, but once it came out on home theater release, all of a sudden it just took off. It, it is one of the best movies of all time. Why? Because there is a, 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 a beauty and a truth and a goodness to it. There's an authentic mythology in that story. It captures your imagination. It's a, it's a story that sort of encourages you or motivates you or gets you to contemplate this idea of what if or what could be. You know, it, it's something that there's a real beauty to that. Well that's missing now. So much of this stuff is just formulaic and not only that but it is a repetitive formulaic type thing. So I think yes we are witnessing the death of Hollywood, hopefully not the death of cinema. These things often have a way of coming around again so it's quite possible that as one entity sort of fades into obscurity and, and disappears into oblivion that others will rise up to take its place because the simple fact is that human beings still have imaginations. Human beings still have a desire for good mythologies and, and for, for uh, things that are creatively excellent. We are still captured by those things. They still grab our imagination. We want to be drawn into those kind of worlds. So that need still exists. It's just a matter of if Hollywood's not going to fulfill the need, then someone else has to. I'd love to hear your thoughts though, so please let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you like the content I'm creating and you'd like to see more of it, 
then please support me on Patreon. There's a link in the description below and a link on screen at the end of this video. And don't forget, if like Clark, you've got questions that you want me to explore, then please send me an email or tweet them at me. The details are in the video description below. That's right, I hear my theme music too. I'll see you tomorrow on The Daily Question. Thank you.